Hello, everybody. We're going to open up this tour at the Office of our Secretaries and Department Chairs in the Science, Engineering, and Technology Building. Normally, visiting families will begin their tours here. We meet our Secretary, Marsha Goodwin, here on the right, and the Department Chair, Alex Bitterman. Students would also collect the appropriate paperwork, which explains the breakdown of each degree that we offer in the Architecture and Design Department, as well as Interior Design. First, we're going to take a look at one of our lower level studios. This is room 417. Students can expect to spend most of their time during the first year in this room in the department. This is often a shared studio with more than one class and students in the studio are getting used to working with their hands and crafting some basic architectural skills like model making, creating three dimensional space and learning about what we call star architects or famous architects, both of present and past. These students are going to end up creating things that might not seem like architecture. In the past, they've made things like kites or hats, and this is to learn about creation, order, and model craft. The boards on the wall here are some of the presentation boards from this semester, looking at architects like Norman Foster and Antonio Gaudi. And they, they're taking a look at their design philosophies and implementing them into their own architectural style. Next is room 420. It's important for our department that each student in the department has their own desk each semester and can feel safe leaving work and personal items in the studio throughout the day. Often students will bring in um, desktop, com desktop computers and leave them. In this studio, students are working on their graphic representation skills using tools like Photoshop and Illustrator. We also provide storage for work through flat files and an array of cabinets in each studio. And you'll notice that each studio is equipped with two computers, a scanner, and a printer for student use. Room 415 is a shared studio, normally with one upper level and one lower level studio sharing the space. This allows for some nice intermingling between the cohorts and gives the lower level students an idea of what's to come in their future academic careers. It's capped off, each studio is capped off at about 14 students as well. So the student to teacher ratio is highly beneficial for the students. Faculty are then normally able to meet with each student in one to two studio days. This gives the faculty ample time to spend with each student before moving on to the next. This is the faculty wing, which is located just around the corner from the previous studio. Often there will be bulletin boards here posted with job postings and graduate school options for the students. All the faculty are located here, which makes it easy for students to access all of us in one location, often moving from one faculty member to the next. Our doors are always open and the faculty are ready to talk with any student in the department. At the end of the hall here, you're going to see some of the student work that we often display in the hallways. This is student work from Design Studio 2 this past semester, and these students were building their skills in Photoshop. At the end of the hall, we're going to move into um, Studio 402. Historically, this is an upper level studio for classes like urban design and comprehensive studio where projects will end up becoming a lot more intense and further in depth of things like designing urban space, facades and building systems and structures. The model you're seeing here was created by students and is reflecting the High Line in New York City. These spaces are always set up by the students who tend to enjoy creating more of a round robin style seating arrangement so they can interact with their classmates during studio. This tends to happen quite naturally in most of our studios as you'll see as we go through our tour. 
We do have a great reputation for being a family here in the architecture department, and that includes both students and faculty. Room 408 is very similar to the previous room you just saw. It's usually filled with upper level students who are involved with projects like museum design and civic engagement. The location and site for these projects is always changing. Recently, they've been working with local citizens and governing boards in areas like Bolivar, Buffalo, and Rochester, and they're reimagining small areas of those cities like the Main Street area. Students in the studio in particular often present in front of locals from these areas and they get ideas from them on, on how to incorporate them in projects. These studios tend to be quite model heavy, so students can expect to be working with their hands in the later years as well as the earlier years. And we'll be creating things, um, both small and large scale building models. This is room 424. This is our thesis studio for students who are part of our five-year accredited BARC program. Often the students take control of this room as well. It really never looks the same from year to year or even from day to day. They'll bring in things like a mini fridge, a coffee maker. You can see beanbag chairs here in the back to make the studio feel a little bit more comfortable, a little bit more like home. The students in this studio are working on their thesis projects for an entire year where they'll identify a problem that they'd like to solve through in-depth research and then create a design to address society in a positive way. They'll then present all these projects in front of an array of faculty, students, and professionals within the field. So the studio really gives great exposure to those students. More often than not, it leads to jobs immediately upon graduation. Recently, we've had some cohorts where we had 100% of the students with job offers before they graduated. Across the hall from that space, our thesis studio, is our digital modeling lab. This is open to students 24-7 through card swipe access. These computers you see here have all the necessary tools and software like Revit, Photoshop, and Illustrator. And those are used um, usually by students who might be lacking in that software or they're without a laptop for any period of time. There's often small classes in this space and maybe some presentations as well um, happening through this area. This final space is our digital fabrication lab. It's also open 24 seven for student use. You'll see immediately here on the left an array of 3D printers, which are free for students to use. Our instructional support assists these students through the entire printing process. And what you're seeing here on the table are actually 3D printed face masks being made for distribution for a local partner, and they'll be distributed to workers in current need. We're actually using um, both small and large scale printers at the moment to print out those masks. So this is our larger printer here. You'll also see here a few of our laser cutters, which are also free to use. Students can purchase materials like chipboard or foam core from the bookstore to put in the laser cutter and quickly cut out a design in two dimensions and piece it together like a 3D puzzle after it's cut. You can see here a short demonstration of the cutting process and the etching capabilities of the laser cutters. It is also possible for students to actually scan an image and cut or etch that design onto another material what you'll see here is our logo in the architecture and design department being etched onto a piece of wood.
So this does conclude our virtual tour for today. We hope you enjoy the rest of your visit at Alfred State. Have a great day.